We continue to take a closer look at sweeteners and today I'm going to talk about sucralose. Sucralose was discovered by British researchers in 1976. It is the only non-caloric sweetener made from sugar and is considered the newest international zero-calorie sweetener. But is it also simply and rosy? Let's get to the bottom of it. Sucralose's safety concerns stem from the fact that it belongs to a class of chemicals called organic chlorine chlorides, some types of which are toxic or carcinogenic. Essentially, sucralose is a chlorinated sugar that is about 600 times sweeter than sugar. Sucralose is made from sucrose when three chlorine atoms replace three hydroxyl groups. This is why sucralose is called 3-chlorogalactosucrose. The technical documentation on sucralose claims that this sweetener is considered one of the safest sweeteners available today. Allegedly, the presence of chlorine in the organic compound in no way guarantees toxicity. Allegedly, sucralose is minimally absorbed by the body and most of it leaves the body unchanged. Allegedly, sucralose is extremely insoluble in fats and therefore doesn't accumulate in fats like some other organic chlorides. However, in rats, sucralose ingestion was shown to increase the expression of the special protein, transporter P glycoprotein, and two cytochrome P450 isozymes in the intestine. These are key components of the presystemic detoxification system involved in the first pass drug metabolism. Although early studies asserted that sucralose passes through the gastrointestinal tract unchanged, subsequent analysis suggested that some of the ingested sweetener is metabolized in the GI tract. Moreover, sucralose changes the microbial composition in the GI tract with a relatively large reduction in beneficial bacteria, including lactobacilli and bifidobacteria. Taken together, these findings indicate that sucralose is not a biologically inert compound. Sucralose is considered safe for all segments of the population, including people with chronic health problems such as diabetes and obesity. A three-month study of the effects of sucralose on the body included 128 people with type 2 diabetes. Sucralose was used at a dosage of 7.5 mg per kilo of weight per day. As a reminder, the acceptable daily intake level for sucralose was set at 5 mg per kilo of body weight per day in the United States and 15 mg per kilo per day in Europe. This study showed no adverse effects on glycosylated hemoglobin levels, fasting plasma glucose levels or changes in fasting serum C-peptide. I found the opposite data. Both human and rodent studies demonstrated that sucralose may alter glucose, insulin and glucagon-like peptide 1, GLP-1 levels. GLP-1 is an incretin hormone secreted in the gut that induces glucose-dependent stimulation of insulin by the pancreas and reduces glucagon secretion by the liver. Further, sucralose was shown to elevate glucose and insulin levels in a small study of a obese women who are at increased risk for further weight gain and development of diabetes. Sucralose is used as a sweetener in almost all foods, over 4,000 products, as well as in beverages, frozen desserts, chewing gums, baked goods and other products. Unlike other artificial sweeteners, it is believed to be stable when heated and can therefore be used in baked and fried foods. However, sucralose and its hydrolysis products were found to be mutagenic at elevated concentrations in several testing methods. In particular, cooking with sucralose at high temperatures was reported to generate chloropropanols, a potentially toxic class of compounds. Ran and Yaila Yan concluded that caution should be exercised in the use of sucralose as a sweetening agent during baking of food products containing glycerol or lipids due to the potential formation of toxic chloropropanols. Chloropropanols compromise a group of contaminants that include known genotoxic, carcinogenic and tumorogenic compounds. There are some claims that sucralose can lead to migraines. We certainly need more clinical studies on this controversial sweetener.